Hi, I'm Justin Lauer, Senior System Engineer with Tintry, and in this video we're going to talk directly to what VM-aware storage is. You're probably hearing a lot of chatter in the marketplace right now about VM-aware storage. We at Tintry think there's a clear distinction between VM-integrated storage and natively VM-aware storage. And in this demo, I'm going to directly show you what native VM-aware storage actually is. We're going to focus on a few parts of our interface that directly speak to the capabilities of managing, monitoring, and acting at a per VM basis. We'll start on the dashboard. When you look at the dashboard, what you're actually seeing is a roll-up of all of the per VM statistics. At our data store performance level, we can see live stats about the data store, but we also have the ability to quickly drill in to the per VM stats. If you're posing the question of, how are my VMs consuming resources? Traditional storage does not have the capability of answering this. With Tintree, we can perform one click to our virtual machine view and directly view the actual workloads running on the Tintree at the storage level. Simply by sorting by IOPS, we can pull up a list of our VMs, the same VMs you're running in your vCenter, and see how they're performing at a specific resource level. In this case, we can quickly see who our heavy hitter on IOPS is. And if we look across the screen, we can see how it's doing in terms of throughput, in terms of flash hit, and also what its end-to-end -end latency is. What's interesting about this VM is it's clearly the highest performer, but it's not having any performance issues in terms of latency. If we look a, a little bit further down the list, we'll actually see a VM that does have a latency problem. And as an admin, you probably want to dive deeper into this VM to figure out exactly what the root cause of this latency problem is. By hovering over the latency column, you can quickly get a glimpse into where the latency actually is. In this case, we're seeing an abnormal amount of host latency. What we want to do is double click on this VM and pull up our per virtual machine graphs. We can graph everything from IO to throughput to latency, to flash it. In this case, since we see this spike in latency, we want to dive a little bit deeper into the latency graph. What we'll notice here is quite a bit of green. This is all correlated to host latency. This is actually latency you're seeing on the ESX host itself. And if you look at this graph, what you'll notice is the storage and the network are actually performing fairly well. So this is quickly providing us a, an example of the infrastructure at the storage and network level is doing well, but the host itself is suffering some problems. And as an admin, you don't want to be just stuck at that level. You want to continue to dive deeper to really find the root cause. What's nice though, and just to click, we've already pinpointed the exact VM with the bottleneck and where in your infrastructure that bottleneck is. When we're typically dealing with host latency, it's usually two metrics that come to play. CPU utilization or memory utilization. In this case, we can directly give you an answer to which one of those is the problem just by clicking on our host graph. If we dive deeper into the host graph, we'll be able to look at CPU utilization, CPU ready time, and swap weight for that specific VM. This directly goes to that question of what is VM aware. We're natively aware of the end-to-end -end latency for the VM, we're natively aware of how the VM is performing on the host, and we're able to help you drill down quickly to troubleshoot these things. What we can look at here is we see a VM that has somewhat normal CPU utilization in the 20% range. And at the bottom, we see the blue line, which is CPU ready time, which is flat. As an admin, this is pretty indicative of a VM that's performing normal with the re within the realm of CPU. But we do see a spike in the green line, which is memory swapping. This is pretty indicative of a VM that is having a memory problem. And if we actually scroll back in time on our graph, we'll see other periods of time that have sustained memory swapping. If we really wanted to prove this, if we had to show someone else in our environment that the VM actually had a problem, it was on the host and it was memory related, we could dive even deeper. And our VM aware capabilities allow for that we can dive one step deeper to the virtual disk view and really take a look at what's going on under the covers. In doing so, we can go right to that VM, and what we notice is that virtual machine has two vDisks. In fact, if you hover over each of the vDisks, you'll actually see the name of that VMDK out on the Tintree VM store. And we also track the VM swap file. 
And what we notice here is that swap file has almost all of the I.O. for that specific VM on it. This is clearly proving that VM swapping that we saw on the previous graph. So what we're armed with now as an admin is the capability of knowing exactly which ESX host, which VM, that it's memory related, and we can now go into our vCenter to continue the troubleshooting. So I'm going to move over to my vCenter. I'm going to look for that VM. And since we thought this was memory related, I'm going to go first check out the memory usage on this VM. So we see it was assigned 2 gig of memory. And I'm going to pull up my resource allocation tab here. I'm going to move to my guest memory section. And I do see a portion of swapped memory. So just like we saw in the Tintree interface swapped memory, we're able to correlate that right into vCenter. So we're sure now that this VM is actually swapping memory. The question still is why? If we move a little bit lower on our screen, we can see that despite the VM being configured with 2 gig of memory, it has a limit placed on it for only 512 meg. This is basically forcing the VM to swap memory. What's nice, however, is this is an easy fix. We can literally just uncheck the limit, and we're done. That VM is happy. But what we've done is we've been able to drill down in just three clicks to pinpoint that exact problem through the Tintree interface. In the world of traditional storage, we would essentially be stuck on the dashboard looking at a LUN or a volume level view similar to an aggregate number of IOPS or throughput, and not really have that drill down capability to pinpoint at a specific VM and how its resources are being used. And moving back to the Virtual Machine tab and looking at a list of our VMs, we're also able to unlock the capabilities of doing advanced things like snapping and cloning at a per VM basis. So just as we see all of the stats per VM, they're all sortable, we can add additional statistics, we can then act upon each of these VMs. If I wanted to, for instance, set up a scheduled snap or take a manual snap of a VM, it's as easy now as right-clicking that VM and choosing that menu option. Again, in the traditional storage world, we're used to snapping and cloning at a volume or a LUN level. With true VM-aware storage, we can now perform those actions directly on a virtual machine. In this case, we can start protecting the workloads that really matter. In this case, I can set up a scheduled snapshot policy, or I can take a manual snapshot. And in the, in the world of manual snapshots, we have two options, either a crash consistent snapshot or a VM consistent snapshot. The difference here is that the VM consistent snapshot will actually work in conjunction with vCenter to quiesce the VM and the operating system and any applications that are VSS aware. It's as easy as just clicking the box, giving it a name, and creating that snapshot. So we'll do that. And I can just click the snapshot button, and that quickly I've taken a snapshot of that virtual machine. What we're doing is basically saving a point in time of the state of that VM on the storage. What we can do from there is then clone. We can go back to that VM, choose our clone option, and what you'll notice is we have previous states of that VM save. So we've got the, the snapshot we most recently took, as well as the nightly snaps that are occurring on this VM. And I think clones can be used for a few different use cases. The most obvious one is nearline quick restores. Uh, an example would be that the VM is corrupted or is having a problem and you want to recover from a last known good state. You can literally pick the point in time you want to recover from, give a new name, to the VM, determine how many clones you want. In this case, it's a server VM. We're only going to clone one. And we even give the ability to apply vSphere customization files, if needed, to that clone. In this case, we're just going to do a quick clone. And what you'll see quickly is that VM populate back into the inventory in vCenter. So you can see that that clone, and th that fast, was added right back into vCenter. So that's just an example of driving cloning from the bottom up. We can also do cloning for other use cases. So I mentioned the nearline recovery. One of the other big use cases is for virtual desktops, rapidly provisioning many, many desktops. So I can come to a, a VM, clone that, and maybe I want to clone this 100 times or 50 times. 
I can literally just come in here and, and choose a new name for this. We can specify the number we want. So let's go ahead and do 50. You can actually do up to 500 clones at a time. And again, I have the option to choose you know, a Windows 7 or other v customization file if needed. And after setting the variables, all I have to do is hit clone. And we can watch these populate in vCenter. I'm going to move over to vCenter, and we'll already start seeing these new clones instantly be added to vCenter. And one of the great things about the Tintree clones, besides being very, very quick, is that they are very space efficient. If we look at one of the clones, we can see that there was actually 34 gigs provisioned for the VM, but it's taking up no space. So out of the gate, these are very space efficient clones. If we actually look at the parent VM, you can see that the VM uh, was a 34 gig provision VM with 12 gig used. Normal cloning on traditional storage would actually copy that 12 gig again. In the Tintree case, since we're VM aware and can do these very advanced snapping and cloning capabilities, we're able to create rapid zero footprint copies. So as you've seen, we, we've just spun up 50 new desktops in just a few seconds there. We can also drive this capability of offloading, cloning, and provisioning top-down, meaning from vCenter down and fully integrated with Tintree. A great example of this is deploying a new VM from a template or just cloning a VM. So in this case, we'll quickly deploy a new server VM from a template. I can go through my vCenter screens here to deploy a new virtual machine. can pick the folder I want it to be in, pick which cluster I want the VM to live in. Of course, I have to pick the storage. I'm going to select my Tintree VM store. And I'm not going to do any customization. I'm just going to let the clone happen. And I, I want you to pay attention to the start and stop time on this VM. So as soon as I hit finish, we'll see here the VM being created. We notice it's already added into vCenter. And if we look at the start and stop time, we see that took about six seconds for that VM to be provisioned. Again, if we go back and look at the parent, we see it was about a 14 gig used VM. And we basically just provisioned a new 14 gig VM in six seconds, and it took up no space, about 11 kilobytes of space there. This is the power of VM aware storage and a purpose built approach that Tintree is delivering. Very rapid, space-efficient cloning, driven both bottom-up from the Tintree UI as well as top-down through vCenter. So moving back to the, our UI here, we have the capability of, of also doing some troubleshooting at the data store level. So what I mean by that is all of these statistics here on the dashboard are graphable. We can get historicals in all of these. So if I wanted to take a look at historical IOPS, for example, I could do so. I could literally click into that box and I'd be given a graph that would have a nice historical breakdown of reads and writes. And this in and of itself isn't super special, but we have a, a, the ability to basically in one click give you the answer to who caused a spike or who was the top consumer at a point in time. A great example is this read spike we're seeing. It happened at 8.40 p.m. Hopefully no one was at work, you're at home, but you still are tasked with finding out who caused this. And typically this could be several hours of troubleshooting, looking at historical logs on your ESX hosts, on your storage, on your network to try to determine which workload caused the spike. With Tintree, it's as simple as clicking at that point in time. And basically we will give you the answer to which VM or which VMs contributed the most. And if you look on a on the right here, we're going to give you a top 10 hit list. We're going to be showing you which workloads were contributing the most during that spike. And this one-click capability basically eliminates the need for hours of troubleshooting or meetings where the wheel of blame happens, where the network team is blaming the storage team, who's blaming the compute team. You're not armed with empirical data to go and say, I know exactly which workload caused this. And we can even continue drilling a little bit further into the workload to determine what actually was happening on that VM right at that time. So it's just as easy as clicking that name right from within the UI and drilling right into the per VM stats for that virtual machine. We also have the capability of troubleshooting at the data store level. 
by drilling into any of these statistics you see on the data store. For example, if I wanted to see a historical I.O. performance at the data store level and then drill down into the VMs from there, I could simply click in to the IOPS here and get a historical view. So I could basically come to any of these points in time. I get a nice read and write breakdown here. And I could come to a particular spike. For example, this one is 7.30 in the morning. Maybe you weren't at work yet, but you're being asked to now figure out what caused this read spike at 7.30 in the morning. Typically, this is an exercise that proves to be several hours of troubleshooting, looking at logs on ESX, looking at logs on your network, looking at logs on the storage to try to figure out which workload caused this spike. For Tintry, we've nailed this with one mouse click. You can literally come to that spike and click, and we will give you the name of the VM or VMs that are contributing to the spike. If you look to the right here, you'll see a top 10 hit list that shows you all the VMs that acted up in conjunction to cause this spike. In this case, it's very obvious there's one VM that's using about 91% of the I.O. at that time. What's nice is we can continue to drill down deeper into that VM to figure out, you know, was this an anomaly? Is this something that reoccurs on a daily basis? You know, which VDisk on the VM was this occurring on? So if I click into that VM, I will be able to go to the per VM graph. It will bring me right to that point in time that we saw the spike. Um, and I can start troubleshooting from here. The first thing that I would do as an admin is expand my graph to a seven day view. So I would just double click and we will expand the graph here. And the first thing I notice is this looks like a fairly repeatable pattern. I'm seeing this big read spike just about every day at the same time. Um, I would, I'm also going to, going to kind of dive deeper and see if there's a particular VDisk that this looks like it's happening on. So I'll go deeper into my VDisk view here, and it'll bring me right to that virtual machine's VDisk. And in this case, I see it really only has one VDisk. So I'm armed now with enough information to know the exact host it's on, that it's on the C drive, and that it's a giant read spike at that same time every morning. This should give me enough information now to go right to that VM and figure out exactly what's happening inside the guest that's causing this daily read spike. And our customers are loving this capability because it's really uncovering patterns they never had access before to see because they're stuck looking at LUN and volume levels. Again, this is the power of VMware storage, being able to now visualize and get statistics and act and manage at very granular VM and VDisk levels. In addition to that, we have some capability to manually assign quality of service. One of the big capabilities of, of Tintree is this automatic quality of service that happens at a sub-VM level where we're basically allowing VMs of very different type of, of workloads to all live in the same place and keep them at a very, very high performance level, keep their flash hits high, and, and make sure that the noisy neighbor problem, i.e. a high throughput or a high I.O. VM, isn't disturbing a low latency VM. Um, we have the ability to also manually, uh, manually assign some capability through pinning, this concept of pinning a VM into flash. And what's interesting is we can pin either a VM or a VDisk into flash. So I could look for a VM that maybe isn't having an optimal latency number or an optimal flash hit, and I could go into the individual VDisk or just pin the whole VM, and I could choose to just pin a portion of a VM. So for example, here's a, a particular VM. It's high performance. I want to make sure it always maintains its high performance, so I could pin just that individual VMDK. And it's just as easy as right-clicking and pinning. It'll give me a warning saying we're going to pin this into flash, and I obviously want to do this, so I'm going to pin that. And what we'll see is that that VM will basically force itself to stay always in flash, essentially giving it that flash level of quality of service guaranteed 100% of the time. And you can see the pin shows up for that particular VM, indicating that that VM decay is pinned. As I've demonstrated, the power of truly VMware storage is that of giving visibility and management at the per VM level and simplifying the architecture and simplifying uh, allotting both performance and capacity resources to avoid having to over-provision. I'm Justin Lauer with Tintree. Please remember to use the Ask a Question button at the bottom of the player if you have any questions on anything we just saw.